Hey friends out there, Rob here. Today I want to talk to you about how I use Yolobox to live stream. I've used a couple of different cameras, but really I want to share with you the process of how I go about using Yolobox to get my, uh, my, well, everything set up so that I can use it. A lot of times people ask this for weddings and funerals, and today the example is going to be on a funeral. I'm going to go through the whole process. So the very first thing that I do is I grab my handy dandy yellow box. After someone uh, orders a funeral service live stream or a wedding live stream, the very first thing that I do is I add it to my calendar and then I also add it to yellow box and I add it to yellow box under the live stream page, just like you see right here by going to adding an event and then filling out the information. I recognize that might be a little bit grayed out or blurred out for you. That's okay. The point is that once I do that, that yellow box, it pops up in every yellow box that I have because of the way that they're set up. Let's see if this one's got any charge. I love using the yellow box mini, but I haven't used it in a minute. So I'll show you in just a second. This one's turning on. Eh, maybe not turning on today, but my Yolo Box Pro should be good to go right here. Yeah, Yolo Box Pro. So as soon as this turns on, I just want to show you how it will uh, pop up. So keep that in the mind in the background. As soon as it gets turned on, uh, you'll see it and we'll come back to it. The part that I'm trying to share with you is how that event shares across all of them. So if you didn't know that, that's a really cool thing. But while we're waiting for that to get turned on and it's doing its job right now, the... I add the event in Yolo Box because I want to also turn the event on in Yolo Box, meaning I want to prepare my content delivery network to know that Yolo Block Box is going to be streaming something to it. And the way that I do that is by activating YouTube in an unlisted capacity. All I do is go into the event, I go to the live stream section, and I turn on private for YouTube. That way it pings YouTube and it sends this event to YouTube's live server. Uh, since we're here, I've got to sign in right now because I haven't signed in in a moment. Give me one second. Great. I've just signed in and now you can see I had to sign in from a completely new box and there it is. That event is right here. I had no real reason to do that other than to show you, so I'm going to turn this off now. So once I go ahead and create the event in Yolo Box and turn on the live stream uh, server that I want you to do, which is YouTube or Facebook, I always use YouTube because it's better. It's better in every way. I can then come over here to my live stream dashboard. And my live stream dashboard is actually, it looks a little different when you first go into it. So I guess if I were to go back out to manage and I were to come over here and go to my channel, the way that it would actually look on YouTube, if you were to jump right in, you'd go to create, uh, go live. This is going to bring you to your live dashboard so that you could go live right now from YouTube at this page. Well, we don't want to do that because if you already created an event in Yellow Box and you have synchronized your YouTube account with it, it will already be up here as well. So we just come over here to our scheduler. And now, as you can see, it's in our scheduler. So this is the event. I can click on it. And now I've got the event. So the next thing that I do is I go and I go over here to edit to set up the event. And from that event setup, I add all of my data and then I add my thumbnail. This is important. The thumbnail I create uh, so that it will have a nice look to it like this does right here. That way it creates a waiting page or a watch page. Now you can do a lot with this, but in order to create this, I've got one document in Adobe Express and I use Adobe Express because it's so fast, but I create these documents in Adobe Photoshop, but you don't have to use Photoshop. You could use whatever you wanted to, uh, to create them. Uh, any kind of image graphic manipulation program would work. I happen to use Adobe Suites and uh, Express is pretty quick. So I have this one graphic here, wherever my, uh, and now this is my background photo that I've taken. This background is all one image. It's already pre-compiled and I have it for every single one of my clients. So as a part of client maintenance, when I get a new client, I create a thumbnail like this because I will need it for all of my branding for them. The type of thumbnail I create depends on the type of client that it is. Uh, your mileage may vary. So now I've already got all of the text laid out in the boxes where I want so I can add the information for the live stream. And I have that for this background thumbnail, which I will download to my computer as the background thumbnail, I will use this to upload to YouTube. I will send it to my client in case they need to use it for any of their branding. 
and I'll have it and I'll save it to YOLO box on the SD card. And I'll do the same with just a title page of the name and celebration of life or whatever the title is. This is a PNG with transparency. That's important because when I open up YOLO box and I open up an event, we'll take this one and go test. Well, I'm not spelling. I will call it tree. I'm just showing you. We're going to T-R-E-E. And then uh, we'll just click today's date. It doesn't matter. And a time. Okay. None of that matters. Uh, okay. Now that we've got that event created, once I come over here, I've got all of my stuff logged in, which means that if I wanted to go and make that event pop up on Google or not on Google, on YouTube, notice we're here at the event. I can go back to my live stream manager and there's nothing there. But now since I've got this event here, I can come over to my streaming destinations, choose, I always do an unlisted stream for stuff like this because I'm using my YouTube channel. So I do a lot of stuff that you guys don't see uh, because I don't want people just commenting on someone's random ceremony. Uh, anyways, once I click done, we'll see that it's thinking about it. It's actually updating. Now it's done. It's updated all of that information. And so if I come over here and I click refresh, Boom. Now you see I've got two events here and one is called tree. That's the one we just created. So if I wanted to take this one called tree and add all of that other information, I would need to come over here, add the description, come down here and add my thumbnail and tags and all that other stuff. Where's the thumbnail? It should be a little box up here somewhere. Yeah. Add the thumbnail, upload a thumbnail. Oh, that's a cool one. It might not let me upload it if it's over four megabytes and boom. Save. Once all that stuff is done, if I go back to my scheduler, you'll now see that I've also got a thumbnail added to this tree description. And because I do that on YOLO box, if I had a thumbnail already on YOLO box, when I create the event, it would also upload that thumbnail. But the way I do it, I upload my thumbnails after the fact because I do a lot of my additional work after the fact. I do a lot of that extra stuff. So there you have it. I use YOLO box no matter which one I'm using because it automatically updates and creates the event. I do one thing on YOLO box one time and it creates it on all my YOLO boxes. So if I ever needed to switch YOLO boxes, the event's already there and it sends it over to YouTube. It makes it real simple and easy to use and I, I just absolutely love it. Anyway, that's the short, simple and dirty on how I create an event for my live streaming ceremonies or whatever I need to do using YOLO box. It's simple. And effective let me know how you do it down in the comments below guys i'm rob i want to thank you so much for watching remind you i'll catch you on the flip side bye for now